Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am finally filming my review on the ColourPop Fortune palette. Again, I just want to apologize for how long it's taken me to get this video up, but a lot has happened with this palette. First, my initial order that I placed on this, on the day that it launched, that package actually came to me pretty quickly, but I don't know why, my post office sent it back to ColourPop and ColourPop pretty much told me I had to place another order. So this is like my second order for the Fortune palette and I still haven't got a refund on my first palette so still waiting on that. Once it got to me I started filming my 3D my looks. I was filming a look too and then the files got corrupted so I had to postpone this video so it was just a whole situation going on. I'm just so excited to finally share my thoughts about it like it's been too long right? It's been too long. But anyway, in today's video, I'll be sharing my thoughts about the palette, what I think of it, and I'll also be showing you guys three demos on this one palette. So if you're interested in seeing all of that, then just continue watching. Okay, so to get started with the review, we should get started with some product info, as always. So this is the Fortune palette. This is 22 US dollars. It comes with 16 shadows in here. So it comes with two satins, eight mattes and six metallic slash duochromes. You guys know Fortune palette is the sister palette of the Fame palette which was the first cool tone palette from Colourpop apparently and when you join them they connect and they make a little circus tent. Isn't that just so cute? I think this is like the cutest thing ever. If you guys want to see my review on the Fame palette I'll be sure to leave a card for it here but let's talk about the Fortune. So first things first when I review Colourpop palettes you guys already know that I love their formula. I feel like throughout all of their palettes it is pretty consistent. There isn't much of a difference between each of the palettes. Sometimes some other palettes are better than others. For example, the Shayla palette. I don't know why I feel like that palette was on another level. But for the most part, I love Colourpop's formula. So I'm not going to talk too much about formula because you guys know I love it. So when reviewing these palettes, I'm talking more about the shade range in the palette, what looks I can create with it, and how it compares to other previous Colourpop palettes. So that's how I'm going to go about my Colourpop palette reviews. Talking about the shade range in this palette, I personally really like it. I feel like you can make a lot of different unique looks. I think you get good transition shades, you also get the medium tones, and then you also get some darker tones to deepen up the look. So you can really create natural and full glam makeup looks. And also there is a wide range of tones in the metallic shadows. So you got a lot to play with. I think this is a good palette, a good solid palette that has all the basics to create a solid eye look. I created three looks. I was really happy with how all of them turned out. I didn't feel like I needed another shade or like something was missing. So I didn't use three shadows, which are shimmer shadows. So I didn't use Dax, Rex, and Money Trees. Out of 16 shadows, I didn't use three throughout my three demos. So in saying that, that this is a good solid palette, I do feel like ColourPop has like release a palette very similar to this or if you do have a lot of the other Colourpop palettes then you definitely probably don't need this one to be honest. So I'm gonna first compare it to Give It To Me Straight. When I see this palette I think of Warm and Berries and when I think of Give It To Me Straight I also think of Warm and Berries. I think that the Fortune palette is kind of the bigger sister where it has just more shadows and it's just playing off the Give It To Me Straight. Holding it up like wow it looks pretty similar. But when swatching the dupes that I feel like from each palette, they are a little bit different. If I had to choose one or the other, I would just go for Give It To Me Straight. I feel like this is more up my alley. These are the shades that I can use for everyday and full glam. This one's a little bit too bright for me for everyday glam. Also with some of the shadows in Fortune, the way they look in the pan, it doesn't translate the way it looks on the eyes. The other palette, when I saw this shade, Misser, Misser here, which is the duochrome. You guys will see in the cutaway, I will swatch them side by side, but it looks exactly like this shade from the Elemental Surprise palette, which is the shade Rion. There are also other similar tones between the two palettes. So if Element of Surprise, 
give it to me straight, work together, had a baby or did something, you would kind of get fortune. I just feel like that ColourPop kind of missed their chance to do something really great with this 16 pan palette. It's just something very similar to what we've already seen from ColourPop in my opinion. It doesn't mean that I don't like this palette, it doesn't mean I won't grab for this palette, I will. I definitely will, I really like the tones in here. But I just think that sometimes ColourPop just needs to slow down a little bit. I feel like for their birthday month they were just launching so much that maybe they didn't spend enough time and when it's 16 pans there's a lot more to think about rather than when it's a 12 pan I feel like they could have done so much more with it I'm not saying that it's bad but I'm just saying that they could have done more that's just my opinion let me know what you guys think in the comments down below that is going to wrap up my review portion so if you guys want to see my three looks on this one palette then just continue watching So first I'm going to take the shade Ben and I'm going to use this shade to set down my concealer which acts as my eye base and I'm just going to put that all over my lids up to my brow bone. And then I'll be using the shade Wiser and this is going to be my transition shade. I like to put this straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions and slowly blending that up towards my brow bone making this very blown out. And then I'll be taking the shade Trove and this is going into the outer corner of my eye. I'm first just stamping on the color first just to get that initial pigment. And then I will go into circular motions to start blending it out. And what is ever left on my brush, I will just bring it towards the inner part of my crease. I am not dipping back into the palette, just using what is left on my brush. Next up I'm using Striker and this is going into the outer corner once again but I'm using a smaller brush which means I'm focusing it in a smaller area. We don't want to take over the previous shades that we just used so I'm just putting that right into the outer corner and slowly bringing it into that inner corner as well. As always, I like to go in with my previous brushes just to help with further blending because usually when you add on color, some colors beforehand can get taken away. And then I'll be taking the shade Jackpot. I am using this wet and I'm gonna start putting this shade into the center of my lid and what is ever left on the brush, I will bring it towards that inner part of my eye. But I really just wanna like blend this all over my lid space. I'm not really being precise with it. Everything just looks nice and smoky. There are no harsh lines. Going back into the shade Trove, I'm going to use this on my bottom lash line from outer to inner corner, connecting it with the wing that I created off camera. Taking Strike It again, I am going to put this on my lower lash line, but I'm really pressing this up against my lash line. We just want to create some definition to match the shadows on top. I'm then going to take my Sigma Long Wearing Coal Liner in the shade Wicked and I'm going to use this to tightline my bottom waterline. And then using the shade Cream, I'm going to use this to highlight my brow bone and also the inner corners of my eyes. And that is the completed look for look number one. For lashes, I am wearing the Iconic Lights from House of Lashes. And for my lip color, it is the Ultra Glossy Lip in the shade Fantasia.
To get started with look number two, we're taking the shade Richie and this is going to be our transition shade. I'm just popping that right into my crease. And then I'll be going into the shade Fortunate and I'm going to pop this into the outer corner of my eye. It's very similar to the first look actually, but for this look we're actually doing a cut crease. Taking the shade Striker, I am doing the same motion as the first look where I'm taking the same brush and just putting it into my outer corner once again, just focusing it in a smaller area. Taking some concealer on the back of my hand, I'm going to start carving out my crease now. I am doing a half cut crease for this look. I will link my in-depth tutorial about how I do my cut creases. And then I'll be taking the shade Nouveau and this is going right on top of that concealer. I did use this shade Wet just to get the most metallic shine from it. But just making sure you don't go past the crease line. You want to stay where the concealer is. If you need to go in with a smaller brush, do so. That's what I'm doing here. I will be taking the shade Richie, which is the transition shade that we use for this look and I'm just going to place this between the matte shadow and where the metallic shadow meets. That way they blend easily into each other and there's no harsh lines and it just looks beautiful and seamless. Continuing on using the shade Richie, I'm going to use this on my lower lash line as well just to make everything look more cohesive so it matches everything on top. And then just taking a strike it once again, I'm going to use this to define my bottom waterline. I'm taking Colourpop's Cream Gel Liner in the shade Punch, which is just like a bright yellow. And I'm going to use this in my bottom waterline. And that will complete demo 2. For lashes, I am wearing the Demure Light from House of Lashes. And for my lip color, it is the Ultra Glossy Lip in the shade Champagne Mommy. I'm going to take the shade Wiser and this is going to be our transition shade once again into that crease using windshield wiping motions. Taking the shade Richie, I'm going to put this all over my lid space, just packing on the color first and getting that initial pigment and then I'll be blending it up into the transition shade. Then I'll be using the shade Striker and I'm going to start creating a wing. So I'm just going to line my lash line just like how I normally would when I create my typical wing liner with my gel. But I feel like using eyeshadow is a lot easier so if you guys have trouble creating a wing, maybe try with eyeshadow just because it's a lot more safer. If you stuff up, you can definitely fix it. And then I'll be using the shade 500 and I'm just going to use the shade to blend out the wing liner, the smoky wing. I'm going to use this where it kind of meets with the other eyeshadows and just keep going over it back and forth to make it very very smoky. I don't want it to be too harsh. And 
and taking the shade Misser, this is the star of the show, I'm gonna place this right in the inner corner of my lid. I didn't use the shade Wet. This shade is described to be a duochrome, so it just has little specks of glitter with like a strong orange base. So I'm really just dusting this over my inner corner and really bring it into the inner tear duct as well. Just giving it like more of a different look. I never really tried this kind of technique and I really liked how it turned out. It's a very simple and easy technique that you can try. Just kind of putting like loose glitters all over my inner corner. And then I just took a gel black liner and I just tight lined my lash line very lightly and I blended it in towards the shade Strike It just so that my lashes when I put them on they had something to blend into. Going into the shade Richie once again, I'm going to use this on my bottom lash line. I feel like my bottom lash line for all three looks is the same. And of course, taking Striker, I'm going to push this up against my bottom waterline, just like the other looks. And then using my Sigma Long Wearing Coal Liner in the shade Wicked, I'm going to use this to tight line my bottom waterline. And I'll use my brush to just blend that out and make it look not so harsh. And that is the computer look for demo 3. For lashes, I am wearing the Bador Lights from House of Lashes. For my lip color, it is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Stockholm. And I just love how this look turned out. I think it just makes my dark brown eyes pop out a little bit more. And that guys is going to wrap up my video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully that my review was not too late, but I'm sure it was. If you did find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up for me. I would appreciate it so much. I just, I don't know, I always get a little bit sad when I upload these videos just because I know it's like so late. Is anybody gonna watch it at this point? And I know I always say this and I know you guys always tell me that it's fine, you guys wait for me, but I just can't help feeling it because I know I am very late to the game. Also, comment down below your thoughts on the Fortune palette. Did you guys pick it up? What do you guys think? Do you guys agree with me? And it's very similar to some other ColourPop palettes. Let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them and just chat with you guys in the comments down below but yeah that is everything for today thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you guys in my next video bye